<laughs> oh, okay, uh, so the topic, it is uh, blowing even the eagles around. <laughs> Welcome to Native Wellness uh, Institute's Wellness Wednesday. Nisto Nidaniko Mokoyo Sukoyi. I uh, I just feel refreshed. I've been out here walking around with the yellow leaves, and um, you can see the water. It's white white capping. Some of the yellow leaves are being blown around. It's really warm, but it is blowing so hard. So I just saw. Uh, I thought I would. Um, just come to you for this hour wellness wednesday we always try to bring you um, positive productive and proactive uh, dialogue and as i was um walking i kept choosing i kept choosing a topic of either gratitude or grief and i, I think that's um kind of kind of bizarre because to have gratitude for grief is almost like an oxymoron. But welcome to Wellness Wednesday, Native Wellness Institute. We, we come for an hour and we choose topics that are um, positive, productive, and proactive in healing your mind, body, and spirit. And Native Wellness Institute, you know, we've been around since the 80s, more so. Um, the last 24 years we we really uh our mission is to keep the teachings of our ancestors alive so whatever we can do to umbrella that or whatever fits underneath that and shoot <laughs> the whole world fits under that the, the teachings of your ancestors and some ancestors were um more gentle And some ancestors that you know came from Europe or other parts or even now you know when we're when we're, we have so much um, of uh, Gaza in our mind and we're coming up on an election where our leadership is causing us grief <laughs> Some leadership, not all leadership. I really, my hat's off on to anyone that runs for band council or anyone that is on tribal council or head of the village or head of a rancheria. My hat's off to them because it is such a precarious place to be in. It's courageous. And if you step into those positions, you know, that can give you a lot of grief, but it can give you a lot of gratitude, too. I am. Um, and I just I just want to say, Oki, I see Julianne, I see a couple of people. I don't want to read all the comments, but uh, welcome to Wellness Wednesday. Uh, what you're looking at is there's a million and a half acres below here. That's the Blackfeet Reservation. We're part of the Six Cantopee, the Blackfoot um, Territory Confederacy, which is from way up Saskatchewan, above Edmonton, Alberta, and then way down into Wyoming. Our Blackfoot Confederacy just had a really good meeting about the land and sustaining the land in Wyoming um, last week and that that's like the bottom of our territory and and I always think of it the way my ancestors thought of it they they still say that's our territory you know um, outsiders a couple years a hundred years ago made some, some borders and some provinces and some states but we still, we call it the medicine line. Yeah, it's just, I wish I could bring all of you here. Sometimes it, um, like 
get such um, emotion here. I wish I could bring you here because this land and this water sustains us here. When I'm home, I, I walk here every day. When I started to walk, walk down my beaver, <laughs> all of my pet beavers, there's a big lodge. My house is about a mile back. There's a big uh, beaver lodge underneath the water. They've been building it. It's been like that since 2019. So they're preparing for something that I think we need to be mindful and prepare for ourselves. I also decided, yeah, it's a little bit windy. And they said, that, you know, it's miles per hour in the States and it's kilometers in the, on our Canadian side. And I was thinking about those people that are um, getting a, a touch of reality with the hurricane in Florida and those, you know, who suffer from Helene and the wind, the wind here is not going to come up 15 feet up, but it's Sabu, you know, Sabu and Blackfoot is it's like a, a cleansing. And sometimes that's the a gratitude, gratitude of grief is that as you're grieving, you have to have cleansing. There has to be layers of cleansing. If it's grief over, you know, a person, place, or thing, I just, I, you know, we a couple of our elders here, their house burnt down and they lost everything. And I keep communicating with them, not to Wapi Saki, and just saying, do you need anything? <laughs> and she, she says, no, we're doing okay. We don't need anything. <laughs> and, but I'll let you know. So I'm kind of, that's kind of like, uh, I know our relationship and when you're grieving sometimes we would just automatically in those stages say you know they call it um shock or denial there's all kinds of you know labels for these but so i'm, I'm waiting a couple more days and then i'm just gonna drive over there and hug <laughs> so sometimes when we're grieving we don't need to say nothing. We just need to drive over there and hug them. So I guess, you know, uh, well, welcome to Wellness Wednesday. <laughs> I, uh, I choose to be um, happy that there's life. I choose to be happy that this is clean water. I choose to be happy because there's clean wind. The air is really clear here, and I guess I'm kind of shaky, but that's okay. I um I have a coat on because when it blows, it can the, off the water it can get a little bit chilly, and we're we're preparing. You know, everyone here is getting wood. We have a lot of really good wood hawkers. They're getting getting wood, and I think I have most of my wood and. My, I'm at that stage in my elder hood where I could still chop wood, but my whole family says, no, you, <laughs> you shouldn't be chopping wood. <laughs> we'll come over and chop for you. <laughs> so I got a lot of nephews and we're all biting at the bit because um, we're very fortunate. You know, when you're 65 years and older here, you, you get a free outtake. October 19th. It's bow season right now. You get any animals with a bow. But on the 19th, it'll open up to a rifle. Or, you know, if you want to pass the rest all year down. Then you see a bunch of black people. You get some elk and you try to wrestle them. This elk can stomp you. Going after an elk with, let's see what else. 
weapons. We a bunch of bats. A bunch of bats. And after an elk with some bats. They could even have an elk or fast. Anyway, we used to have buffalo runners that could run pretty fast and run along the cliff. But uh, we're, we're getting ready for. So, I want to share a little story. I'll do this, I'll be really good. We bargained with this Mr. Batabio creator. Bargaining, say, creator, if I do this, just make the cancer go away, or creator, if I, if I really just keep my house clean and pay all my bills and help other people keep my child alive, we bargain. And that's, that's part of, you know, Creator hears us. That's why it's always really, really good. I, I, you know, lately I just, my prayer is just to, that someone has a long, healthy life. So just to, to pray that everyone has a long, healthy life. And that's where you start to get the, the gratitude, you know. I, my mother just turned 86 and we were traveling around and I go, I go, yeah, I'm her oldest baby and uh, uh, I'll be 69 pretty soon, <laughs> but I'm still her oldest baby. <laughs> but when you witness gratitude, like, like now I, um, my mother doesn't have a desire to go to all the funerals. She's been saying for quite quite a few years now that she wants to remember them how they were when they were alive. She wants to remember them when they were vibrant. She wants to remember them when they were happy. She wants to remember them when they were smiling. And she doesn't require to go look at them in a casket or you know the clothes casket, all that kind of stuff. She doesn't, that's not what she looks forward to, so. So we were, you know, of course, Blackfeet, we're always making our own little, you know, some of our relatives are saying, I'll come to my own funeral. <laughs> I'll show up at my own funeral, but I don't want to go. But we have to, there's, there's honoring, there's part of, part of grief is that, that, that there's a stage called acceptance. To be grateful when you accept the grief. And I was, you know, I was just thinking, you know, like some of my, my cousins that I've lost, I really been, um, it's 
been a tough goal because I love all my first cousins. And I, I have grief over that. And then we, we have, you know, when you're, you get to a place, you accept your, your own immortality, immortality, or the, how long you're going to live and how you should live it. So acceptance, acceptance of when we're, yeah, I'm way out in the boonies and I just saw a truck way off drive by, interesting. <laughs> where, and I'm out here where, where I can see because there's a sow and um, three cubs that's been kind of um, breaking into people's sheds around here. And, and we're not supposed to leave any garbage out right now. And it's, the bears don't know how to act. Usually it's snowy and this is they start to hibernate. That wind's really picking up. So I'm just going to um, hold you close because I might flip my, blow my phone away. <laughs> A different kind of, oh, my phone's blowing up. <laughs> my phone is really blowing up. <laughs> anyway, that acceptance being grateful for you know like I, I when my father died in 2002 I accept that he's he's gone on this physical earth but I know he's not gone because sheesh my brothers and sisters act just like him and they look just like him. <laughs> and my cousins I have some cousins that look just like my dad <laughs> So he's not gone. And you know, and, and I choose to, acceptance is I choose to look at all the good things. Like, you know, the things that dad, you know, dad was a speaker of the higher language. Dad was a hunter. He, he also wrote all these songs, you know. He, he would sing, sing his good luck um, hunting songs. You know, heading out with um, Dave Brown. Have, um, really good luck, you know. They would they would go out hunting. I'm gonna have to hold because everything's kept blowing away. And everybody always wants to go hunting with my dad. And, and they would they would come back and they'd have all their um, pack horses. And a lot, you know, and they they'd be back into the canyon, you know, big badger, uh, way back in there, and they would bring meat, and they would give meat to everybody. And I, I think about how, because that was some of my favorite memories. I remember when Dad would come back from, there'd be big hindquarters, and we lived by, um, you know, swims unders, and uh, Dave Roundine used to. They were, would always go. Bob Miniguns. We had we had a lot of. Uh, they were um, Slickfoot Society. They were kind of everyone that lived out out on the south the south end of the res there. And Dad would drop be dropping off hindquarters or you know choice backstrap to some of the elders and the, they would feed everybody. And you know what, that, that wasn't a paid position. It was not, it was just how they fed everybody. But I also, I was thinking, you know, I was teasing, teasing with, um, cause my brother was here and he, he headed out 5.30 this morning back to his family in New Mexico. But I was, uh, I was, I was teasing him cause he brought his grandson and his grandson, is 11 but the grandson i was our kept teasing i said do you like raw kidney and salt <laughs> you know, and he's like <laughs> i said you should try it raw kidney and salt is some of the best in the whole world anyway we're we're walking and and then um we were walking along the lake here and I said, has anybody taught you how to skip rocks? You know, and um, you have, it's a rock where you 
throw it across the water and it skips two or three times across the water. For the next, he would have just, for the next couple of hours, he would just, at first he picked up, you know, a big rock. And I go, no, it has to be a flat rock. And I was showing him the kind of rocks that you should choose that were better rocks that you could skip rocks. And so he, uh, he got the hang of it and, and then he went and stopped. And I just thought, that's, okay, so that acceptance, you know, we don't, any of our relatives that aren't here with us anymore on this earth are, are we have in our family, we have some addicts who are still in their addiction somewhere, or we have a couple relatives that are locked up behind bars, or we have a couple relatives, they just moved away and they just don't want to live here because whatever they have there, it's a choose, they choose not to live here. And they have all kinds of excuses, but you should get your ass back here and live here. <laughs> I mean, that's this is our territory. You know, this is this is a good place to live. You make a living, and it's not um, something that you can Google how to live as an Indian on the Blackfeet Reservation. <laughs> how to live as an Indian on the Kainai Res. How to live as an Indian at Sixigai, you know, how to live as a Indian on a, a native uh, at Brockett. How to live as an Indian in New York. <laughs> how to live as an Indian in Seattle. How to live as an Indian in Los Angeles, you know, sometimes. And I guess, you know, I'm just, I think, I think you would do better if you lived at home on the land. And not just just a thought for today, but this um, this gratitude. This this gratitude for grief. I was um, uh, Deb O'Rero, she's a clinician that um, and a lot of her work is with trauma different um, young people and older people and she her and I in our work and with Native Wellness Institute we have developed 10 stages of grief that Indians have because of our historical good and bad that we actually have a couple more it's not like Kubler Kubler Ross that's uh, white people not be Aki's, not be Guan, not be Quinn's. That's uh, describes, that's for them. And and yeah, we, we, utilize, we can utilize those six stages of, you know, denial, shock, bargaining, anger, acceptance, depression and acceptance. But Indians have a, a couple more and, um, and I'll just I'll give it an example. And I think, um, of despair and rage and steps of grief. I'm just, uh, there's a stuff gonna blow away here. I'm trying. <laughs> anyway, the, you see the rage, um, and I, I see it because rage is often, um, like here an example on our reservation, is they start raging at the IHS or anyone who works there their fault that they died. They rage and they've even, you know, popped a couple of the doctors in the face, boing, <laughs> slapped a couple of nurses, you know, or <laughs> that's so Indian, you know, you get mad. It's IHS's fault, so I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> that's so Indian. Just beat up that rage. Are they just rage? In other ways, I think I see rage um, with food. It's like you're not going to just eat two cookies, you're going to eat the whole dang bag. You're not just going to have a couple scoops of ice cream, you're going to eat a couple pints of the ice cream. They rage with food, and, and that can be grief. 
that can be grief, you know, with uh, sexual assault and rape. We try to make our body so unattractive so no one else will hurt us again. So Deb, I was talking about Deb because Deb was, she was saying we have to heal and one of the ways of healing is to heal with our food and not not be obese and try to make ourselves look ugly. But you know, last week I was just laughing because you know, Indian bodies, we're different. We're kind of shaped different. And, but that rage, that rage can, and dip into that despair because I really, you know, people say, yeah, I was, a, I was had a bout of depression. I couldn't even get out of bed. And I heard one, one family member say that you don't understand depression. It's like crawling up a mountain of broken glass. <laughs> Could you imagine crawling up a mountain of broken glass? And that was how our family member described depression. So, and I'm describing that because today I wanted to talk to you how do we we battle this and I'm showing you right now go go out on the land and I'm, I'm looking around because you know I don't want to run into that sow and the cubs and I don't think I will and I have I have protection everybody you know where we live where everybody hunts so every, everyone's packing <laughs> but I, 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 just, I put out prayers and I took some bear tallow some bear fat we always put it in the winter we put it on the bottom of our feet with a little bit of cayenne pepper and that that fortifies your lungs so you don't get sick or cough and I started I said whoa so I got out the bare fat they find enough food and that they get to hibernate and that you know it's a it's a good fall for them and that nothing bad happens to them that they get to so I don't I don't think um, I'm not doing anything to antagonize that's the bears and and that's also when we you know our our Sabbath berries are our Saskatoon that's why we pray with that one berry we reignite the treaty with Kyo and Boxikwe we, we pray with it and we put put it into the ground that treaty is reignited so that we'll never hurt the bears and they'll never hurt us. But you can you can uh, eat a few tourists. <laughs> there, there's no tourists here right now, but you can there's some tourists over there. Go eat them though. <laughs> Especially if they try to pet you. <laughs> Don't pet the bears. Don't pet the the eeny, the, the buffalo. <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there's just such, and you know, we need tourists. We need the the season is good. Everybody had a good season here. But someone was saying that maybe we had four million tourists. Yeah, they all want to come here, and they all want to jump in this water. They want to fish water they want to you could drink this water you don't have to have bottled water it's fresh it's glacier water and so this so this gratitude um and this morning you know what what i i would really encourage you to think about is start the day with a gratitude list and so this morning I don't uh, I'm not a coffee drinker so it takes me a while to kind of wake up and I um, so I decided to sit on the deck and wake up in the quietness and do a gratitude list so I actually brought out my pen and my dream journal and I started just you know just saying saying what you're grateful for grateful that you have a winter coat grateful that you could be shaggy, grateful that you could be greasy. Indian oil of Olay, that's why Indians always look good when they get older. They're just greasy. <laughs> 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 
Did you notice there, there aren't too many ugly Indians? Maybe a couple. <laughs> but they're... <laughs> you know, but start with that gratitude list. You know, start with, you know, being grateful for a good night's rest. Oh, after this birthday week, celebrating with mom, I slept. Ooh, I slept so good. I think I might have slept nine hours because we, we just we just did a lot. We went a lot of places and we ate with our family and we shared stories and we shared secrets. Good secrets, bad secrets. And my mom is always telling stories and so we, we shut up and we listen. So when old people talk, shut up and listen. Don't over talk them. Just sit there. You have two ears and one mouth and listen to them. But that gratitude list, you know, be grateful. <laughs> be grateful for this wind. Be grateful that it isn't blowing the roof off. I might stand up for a minute. Stand more. Be grateful for, you know, the food like when my brother came, I gave away the last, I just, the last of my buffalo. I uh, won a buffalo last year in the lottery and I had 530 pounds of meat. So I gave, I gave him the last of the meat because my brother's really changed his ways and his A1C. And his A1C, he said his A1C is four. And, you know, he doesn't, um, and so we, we had a sourdough bread that has no sugar in it. We don't, that's the only kind of bread I've been trying to just stay on. Because my A1C is six. And I just want to keep it that way to be. So being that gratitude list, so I was just, I'm not, uh, I'm never, our family's big, you know, we've never been bony or skinny or they say, geez, you're bony, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, uh, so I just said gratitude that, you know, have routines like eating half a banana, eating an apple, eating some oatmeal, eating sourdough toast, and sometimes with no butter. And then later on, you know, it's just like, a gratitude for a they say a roof over your head but just um i almost feel like walking out just walking you out here a little bit so you could have gratitude that this exists in the world that you can go out and you can embrace the waves that you can go out and you can you know have a little campfire I wouldn't do it right now because it would take up because you could even right here they're burning some of their slash that you that you could go out and um, walk that Gene Tagabon and he always says take off your shoes and walk a little bit barefoot but just go out and I have my hokas on and I, I already got out my Eddie Bauer thermal socks because I, li I don't like my feet to get cold but just just do that go out and enjoy that put that on your gratitude list that you went for a walk and uh, I've been getting back to my routine and I noticed that my my belt's not tight like how it was you know when you feel like a sausage <laughs> you see someone looking like a sausage and their their belt is you can't see the belt buckle because their roll is hanging it over. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's real Indian. You look over and you can't see their belt buckle because they ate. They've been eating too much. <laughs> too much fry bread, dye bread. <laughs> I was just oh my nephew. He's wicked. He um he's a great bakery. Today he was. He made fry bread donuts. So he had fry bread with fry bread donuts. And, he, and you know they got they all got ate up because he makes really good fry bread. <laughs> so
be grateful that you had a small piece, but you didn't need three. Because, <laughs> you know, it's like cinnamon rolls. Be grateful that you ate half a cinnamon roll instead of eating three cinnamon rolls. <laughs> uh, you know, you just gotta, gotta have some humor with it. So, um, I think I can kind of, oh, this might be kind of nice. Yeah, there's a windbreak right here. So that gratitude list, and I was going through my social media and it, it's taken some time and I'm not done. I finally was deleting my friends that have died. I couldn't let them go and there's a couple I still can't let go. But decluttering, decluttering on your social media. So do it this way. <laughs> I strongly suggest if they aren't good to you and they don't make you feel good or they're high maintenance, take all your energy, delete them. <laughs> or declutter them from your life and put someone in who makes you feel, feel good. Someone who is, doesn't make you feel exhausted, that gives you new energy or gives you new ideas or gives you you know, just uh, take out someone who's not healthy for you and bring in people who uh, encourage you, who give you confidence, who lift your spirit. And so that's, you know, so when you're making that, that gratitude list, look how beautiful that is. That's why, you know, I come out, I was thinking, wow, for 30 years, 30 years to look at these rocks and so in my gratitude list I put thank you for all this time and if I could have a little bit more and even if I don't thank you what is to bad to be what you've given me so far and so this is so it is you know like last week was mental health but this gratitude for grief, because remembering grief is always as big as the love. So when you love something, you got to be grateful that it's going to take time. Grateful that you're going to go through all those stages and this too shall pass. This too shall pass and you can remember the legacy of that person or that situation. Because it might be grief over divorce. It might be grief over you left the position. Or you you finally looked at all your energy and your workaholism. And you started to get off some boards and not do as much as you're doing. And do some self-care. Put that on the gratitude list. And, and, um, and one of the things that once you get through a, a good place with the grief, it's way beyond, it's almost like a spiritual acceptance. It's almost like once you, you reach that, you get to renew, restart, and start over again. I just, um, I resigned from one kind of board advisory earlier today and I accepted a spirit a global advisory or part of it zoom and then we will be meeting in person in British Columbia and so that and this morning because we have choice in what we choose to be involved in like don't let electronics and Google just have you on zoom eight hours a day did you know that's crazy making? Sorry to tell you, if you're on Zoom eight hours a day, back to back, and you can barely have lunch, that's crazy making. So triage your energy. Think about, tri be grateful when you're going through those, the grief, or you're going through heavy heart, when you carry a heavy heart. Triage your energy. Sleep good. Take time. You know, I, I decided to be out here because um, 
this past week has been I've been just doing what my mom wants to do <laughs> she we went and got in the uh, spirit candlelight vigil and walked from the city hall in Lethbridge and we walked over to Galt Gardens that was beautiful <coughs> Ooh, that sun we went she wanted to go into um to medicine and by Sinapa and, and um, rising wolf so we did she wanted to try different we we went out to different restaurants i mean we just did all these things but she said she said i just don't want no drama i just want to visit i want peacefulness and oh, I took oh, I, I was gonna take her to her secondhand stores because she loves going to Value Village in Lethbridge because they have the best books. Because people read, they might be more literate than Americans. They read a lot of books and they'll read the book, and so out of kindness and generosity, they take it to the secondhand store and you can buy it. So she bought. She was just. I had never seen her so happy. She bought three hardbacks and they were just a couple dollars each. <laughs> so when you're going through your grief, when you're going through, you're going to come to a place where you're going to just appreciate staying in the here and now. You're just going to appreciate um, the humor because one of my mom just kept laughing because when we were in Lethbridge, she was reading this joke that was on the menu. And the joke, this is the joke of my mom's humor. <laughs> it, it said, the diner said to the waiter, hey, waiter, there's a footprint on my omelet. And the waiter looks down at the diner and said, well, you told me to step on it. <laughs> You told me to step on it, so there you go. <laughs> we kept giggling about that all day, you know, just, um, and one of the things that this is, we've just always done it in our family is, my mother always, she used to, she taught me how to read <laughs> when I was like four, you know, but my mother always likes to read each of our horoscopes and say, well, what does that make you think? <laughs> So here we were, she was reading Ira's horoscope and reading, you know, Lori's horoscope. And then um, and then, then other people that we care about. Well, I said, well, what's so-and-so's horoscope? And do you think we should tell them or do you think they should just go blindly out into the world? <laughs> anyway, it was just one of the fun things we do. But I always, uh, when I was just thinking, when my mother reads to me, because I, you know, I remember she always read to us, and it wasn't just at bedtime. She would just say, "Hey, listen to this," and she would start reading, and then we would just get soothed. We'd just be comfortable and would love the story. She would read to us, and then now, what this is, you know, this is the gratitude. I love listening to my mom's stories. Any of your elders, if your elders is anyone over 50 years old, take time and just sit with them. Get a cup of tea, get coffee, get Starbucks, whatever you need to do, and listen to their stories. You know, how was it when they first moved out to their first place? How was it when they first started their first job? How was it that maybe a relationship didn't work out and they had to grieve it? Listen to single women's story of raising their children by themselves. Listen to single men raising their children by themselves. I just feel like being out here with you today because this is how I heal from my grief. This is 
how in the past 30 years, you know, I had a, a good old apester, Dio Campbell's in the San Francisco area, and Wounded Knee just passed yesterday. And I did not find out till late last night. And I want to thank some of my Bay Area families because the last time we were together was in 2019 with them. So I was looking at the pictures and I was just, I was enjoying because I remembered the stories we were sharing at that time. And it was just so, it just reminded me of how much love we had for each other as activists. And, and he was always, you know, he always, he was like a Nelson Mandela. <laughs> He'd be talking it. <laughs> and now, now he's left he's left the earth. But his legacy is still here. He would always, you know, have a August Lock t-shirt on. He would always have Indian religious people. He would always have John Trudell t-shirts on. He would always, you know, he was uh, wounded knee was just so cool. And then he'd always have Alcatraz. So that's, we spent a lot of time with him with the 50th anniversary in 2019 and the takeover of Alcatraz, which is November 20th, 1969. And I know this because of my mother. You know, my mother was involved in helping get the boat to take him out there. And they didn't get the boat that they were supposed to, so they got this other boat and that couldn't go near the shore. So that's why Richard Oakes had to dive off the boat and swim to Alcatraz. And then others stayed on Alcatraz. But Wounded Knee, he knew, he knew the stories and he would remind you of sovereignty. He would remind you of the treaties. He would remind you. And so when we lose him, and I guess I'm having gratitude that I knew him. Having gratitude that I knew the real, the real person. And having gratitude that we had these conversations and plotting and activism and marches and, and all, of, all of that. Just having all that gratitude. I, I'm trying to find a place where it's not as windy. <laughs> So today, I guess, you know, we're kind of winding down. Um, we're going to go through grief because Ishtabatapi gave us the ability to love. The ability to, to love is such an incredible gift. So love many. Love your family. Tell them every day that you love them. Hug them. Tickle them. Make them laugh. <laughs> I think the greatest present my mom was tickling her great grandson all afternoon and he was just laughing. <laughs> he was just laughing, but she kept tickling him. And he got, he used so much energy in laughing being tickled. He had to take a quick nap. And he just like fell asleep. Mom was rubbing his back and I go, is he asleep? She goes, yeah. He went through all the emotions and that's safety. When you can get tickled so hard <laughs> that you, you have to take a nap because you used a bunch of energy. There's the wind coming in. A lot of red leaves, a lot of orange leaves. So I'll leave you with this. Just jot down the people, the places, and the things that are really important to you. And look at the ones that you have to like let go. But the ones that you aren't, cherish them. Make intentional time. Start ganting out, you know, who are you going to have Thanksgiving dinner with? How is it going to be a happy event? 
What are you going to do for Halloween? Dress up. Don't, you know... <laughs> we were laughing because... Oh, oh, he said, well, we can leave a basket of apples. And then everyone was like, no, because people put stuff in those apples, inject them, and blah, blah, blah. And I was going, jeez, what can you give? You know, what can you give? So anyway, we're, I'll, I'll leave it with this. Ask young people, what do you want? So I asked my 11-year-old great-nephew... What, what do you want next time I see you? And he just started rattling off all these games that he wants because he loves to play games. And I go, I can't memorize all that. You have your grandma text that to me. And yes, I'll get them for you because I'm your badass, Andy. I can spoil you. <laughs> I, and I don't care how much they cost, whatever it is. Anyway, he was like, yeah, yeah, you are my badass, Andy. I said, well, you have you, you have your grandma text them to me, and when I come down, because we're my mom's wish was for all of us to go down to New Mexico to my brothers and to have a meal together. Thanks, to give thanks. So anyway, I'll, I guess I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna learn what are the newest gamers games, <laughs> and because that that's what he wanted, and I can't judge it. It's just like, you know, not. I, I decided what I've learned is I don't tell them what to eat and what not to eat. Just put good stuff on the table and let him pick. Ooh, and he was eating. He was eating that fried wonton. He was eating that pineapple garlic uh, spare ribs. <laughs> he just ate and ate and then he took a plate to go. And this, so this has just been so celebratory with this past week. And so uh, welcome to Native Wellness Institute's Wellness Wednesday. I just wanted to come and visit with you a little bit. And it's even calming down a little. Um, I'm just walking around again because there is a grizz and some sow in the areas. I don't want to, you don't run into them. But I just wanted to come to you with Wellness Wednesday and if you love people, you're going to go through grief. So go through it gentle, gently. Be good to yourself. And recognize which stage you're in. You know, I have some friends who haven't been able to cry yet. And that's okay. Cry when you're alone. Cry when you're in the shower. Watch something sentimental on TV and cry. your snots come out and you're just <gasps> and then your heart is feeling that love and then you come along and you suck it up stay stuck you keep sucking it up don't suck it up <laughs> so with that I'll just have to um, I'm going to walk you off the water and say uh, keep talking Matsuno. Wednesday.
that's Divide Mountain. And you're looking at um, Mokakin, the backbone of the world, we call it. Goes into Glacier National Park, going to the Sun Road. You can come Glacier National Park, come visit. On our other side, it's water, called Waterton. You can come visit. There's really good restaurants in the summertime. There's Leaning Tree. Leaning Tree stays open all, all winter. Otherwise, you have to go to the Canadian side. There's Ming's. Eee, Ming's. Best Mandarin Chinese that you can get. Just It's only 30 minutes, 30 miles that way north. And so it was kind of like DoorDash. I went and got a bunch of Ming's and I dashed, but it took 52 minutes to dash to Brownie. <laughs> it was a badass anti-door dash. <laughs> so with that, we'll, we'll see you next Wednesday. And remember that you deserve wellness. You deserve healing. And Native Wellness Institute will always be here because we'll provide skills, tools, and training you can go to our site and see our events or you can go to www.nativewellness.com and request any kind of training. So until we see you next week, Kitaki Domatsuno.